when I went to um, Jackson, Mississippi, and I was able to witness a, a very intimate Boosie show, he was about to get locked up. And the show was something I never seen before because it was packed as hell, wall to wall. But it was all these people that was in unison that was directly connected to his energy. And everything he was telling them, they was hanging on to every word. He like, man, my diabetes has been fucking with me. And I'm thinking to myself, damn, why would he at a rap show talk about that? But then everybody like, oh, man, like everybody. This is his family. His fans, see, his fans are different. His family is his motherfucking family. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. So when you so you've heard so many stories about, you know, pimp and everything. I wanna go into the fact of I'm gonna push forward. Uh Boosie. Yeah. You when the first time you heard of Boosie? Uh way back in the day. Um he actually bought Boosie and Webby when they was teens, uh, to Big Jack Barbershop. Big Jack being one of the uh, cats that was in the 4BM before they broke off to be UGK, you know what I'm saying? They had a little setup in the back of his barbershop. He was like a master barber in Port Arthur. So he bought uh, Boosie and Webby over there. He talked about it way back then, but I just wasn't back off in the rap yet like that. I was lost in the streets fucking off. So I have been heard about him. And then when I saw him, you know what I mean? I didn't know what I was looking at. I don't think nobody knew those kids was going to become what they became. You know what I mean? But I've been around them cats a bunch of times. It took a while before Webby opened up and really chopped it up with me, but he did. You know what I mean? And then the times I've been around Boosie, uh, it was times when it, it was too crunk. We was at the club in some part of Louisiana, and he pulled up, you know what I'm saying, by 12 deep. Everybody got on T-shirts, looked like nightgowns and shit. <laughs> and it was back in the day. And we standing out there talking to D Solo from Street Flavor out of Houston. So he actually got that footage. And so Pimp introduces all, woo, 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 and I chop it up with Boosie briefly. See him again in Ace Town. Same get up. Them niggas tried to grab a chain off of bad ass and them. And bad ass and them. Bad, bad. Niggas got their motherfucking ass whoop around that whole man. You know what I'm talking about? Come on, man. That's all I'm saying. But then I met him again. Bun introduced me to him. Me, Gorilla Zoe, Boosie and shit. Then I met him again at the Lil Wayne show at the Cajun Dome. Me and Vicious opened up. And I, I chopped it up with him briefly, but he was gnawed. And at the time, I didn't know why. But at the time, him and him and Wayne had a little, you know what I mean? So it was always something going, going on when I was around him. But he always was cool with a nigga when I was around him. I asked you to, ask, to say this, like... That Boosie early on, the white me down and on back to when you talking about versus the Boosie that we deal with today, the Vlad interviewing Boosie, uh, the the Boosie who built out his estate and got his kids name, which is so dope. Uh, streets with his kids name and in, in, the, in the, you know around his house and he building his own neighborhood out. Um, what's the difference in those two Boosies? That the Boosie before he was uh, caught on a murder case mm -hmm. when they had him on death row. Uh, versus the Boosie we deal with today, who just actually uh, still dealing with a monitor on his leg right now. Right, right. Like, like, what's the difference in these Boosies? I think it's a beautiful combination of uh, maturity. Um, the type of life he's lived and the things he's seen, man, it's, it's about as closest to, to the end of your life you can get on death row. Mm. My, I should mention this, but my brother, you know what I'm saying, just went through fighting death or life, but we'll get back to it. Okay. So him coming out and now free, he's one of them dinosaurs because he was young enough, but he was always around the OG. So he soaked up all that game. Then he was with an independent label. So he soaked up all that game. Now he come back the OG of the young niggas. Like he's living this, this combination of that young nigga OG shit at the same time. And he's maximizing it. We know what the business is when a nigga jump on that mic and say, fuck Charleston White or whomever, you know what I mean? So 
he perpetuating that motherfucking Al Jarreau on the major label that's le level. So that's why he's going on these Velaz, you know what I'm saying, doing this Orlando Brown type gangster shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's hard. I, it's I, a hell of a combination. Yeah, I, I like it. I, I like the way you broke that down. Yeah, yeah. What you say about what Boosie said about um, Dallas? He said Dallas is his he biggest just said platform. That. He ain't coming he said, back to no, this is 150K. Dallas is biggest platform. This is where he get the most love and everything like that. But, but they shot said, him in Dallas. But because he got shot in Dallas, he said the only way he'll come back is if $150,000. That makes perfect sense. Because if somebody almost took your life in a place, most people wouldn't even return. Mm -hmm. But 150 racks will assure him he could put that security team in place the way he need to. He can cross his T's and dot his I's and come give the fans that still love him in Dallas a good show. Mm -hmm. If he come do this bitch half ass, somebody might finish the motherfucking job. Mm -hmm. So 150, he already sat there and sketched that shit out where that shit gonna be delegated at. That's but I feel like if somebody... Smart ass way to look that, at it. That, I thought about that, that that's what he'd want for the security, but he came and performed in Tyler many times already <laughs> since then. If somebody really was trying to get him, they'll drive down to Tyler, go get him if they wanted to. Yeah, they would, but what cake he bake in Tyler? Uh, it could be a fucking uh, three-story sheet cake baked in Dallas. This is home turf. Them niggas can whip up all kind of shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So And, and just going down into East Texas like that ain't that easy the way you making it sound. Yeah. They, they don't know these niggas down there. It's a bunch of niggas down there. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but niggas I don't every, know niggas shit, everywhere, man. man. Niggas. <laughs> man, but, but you know, when you think about just Boosie and his... Legend, the way that he has, man, he's massaged our ears with a good sound ever since he's been doing his thing, man. And, and you know, R.P. the Pimp, but, but with Pimp, you know, saucing it up because Pimp had a lot to do with it. I think I was telling Bobo that the other day. Like, you know, Pimp was was definitely uh, a big piece of that puzzle, the way that whole thing came together. And to this day, I've been enjoying it, man. Shout out to Boosie Boo. Straight you know? up. And with it. And Webby. Webby, yeah. Webby, man, that nigga there, man, he true to it, too, and loyal as they come, man. He love Pimp, man. Man, when I went to um, Jackson, Mississippi, and I was able to witness a, a very intimate Boosie show, he was about to get locked up. And the show was something I never seen before because it was packed as hell, wall to wall. But it was all these people that was in unison that was directly connected to his energy. And everything he was telling them, they was hanging on to every word. He like, man, my diabetes been fucking with me. And I'm thinking to myself, damn, why would he at a rap show talk about that? But then everybody like, oh, man, like everybody, this is his family. His fans, see, his fans are different. His family is his motherfucking family. family. Mm -hmm. Then he like, man, I might be going through this time. And he like, something about somebody. Then he started crying and shit. Everybody in the goddamn crowd was damn near crying. I'm like, where the fuck am I? You know what <laughs> wow. I mean? So I understood, like, man, this this boosie shit, this is some different shit. Wow. It was somebody got mad at me about the a boosie Jay-Z comparison. I don't I can't remember who it was. Oh, I know, I remember who it was now. Yeah, because I, I basically I wasn't saying that Boosie was but Boosie to uh, I like to us, I, I mean I'm I I don't I'm not from the East Coast. Bro. Right. So when I relate, I relate to niggas that talk in the South, okay? I ain't I gonna, you. Like if you put something out, I'm be like, that nigga talking that talk. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Because yeah. I know, you know, you might have ate, you might have had to, you know, eat, you know, uh, Roman noodle. They do that up there. But down here, we might have had to go to the well to get some water. Right. We It just might be a different way we did it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Not saying there's no no takeaway from nobody else because I love them too up there. They, they look like us. But when you hear the sounds of what Boosie do, and, and, and the way his music come across and the way his, it's therapy for, for people who've been locked up. That's people who've been, you know what I'm saying? Who've been locked up in the in, in the South and who've been through this stuff, man. If you ain't been through it, you ain't gonna be able to understand to where it, I'm yeah. coming from. You know what I'm saying? But what he does and what, and even like Webby holding him down when he was gone the best he could. Right. People don't realize that. That was heavy. I love seeing Webby out there giving it a row. And well, when Boosie come on, Boosie say, man, you know that nigga don't supposed to be in there talking, man. Y'all ain't got Boosie, Webby out here talking and doing, doing interviews, man. He was getting it in the best he could. Best he could, man. And he, and he always been, you know what I'm saying, a good dude when I was around. Like, he, he led a lot of people around him. That's one of the things that I watched. I was like, damn, I wish I was closer to them because I would suggest, man, watch this perimeter. There's, there's too many... <laughs> 
just, hey, I'm around type dudes, like anybody and everybody, but that's his energy. Uh, just with Pimp, now we didn't move like that. We moved totally different, but at the same time, that's their, that's their camp. I respect it. If that's how they move, that's how they move. But we just didn't move like that. So when I used to hang with them, I'd be like, damn, man, the perimeter is being broken by just so many people who could just walk up and blend in. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.